Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Dorota Palicka International, new artist and educator here. And today I will show you how to sculpt the nails and then do a very easy cat eye design. You can have a wee preview of it in here. So nothing overly too complicated, pretty interesting look and I hope you will really enjoy watching this tutorial. Let's start! We are going to start with the form application. So just pull the top of the form, place it on the back and then trim the form a little bit. So one side, other side. And it is just so we can get a really nice pinch of the form. Roll in between the fingers. The tabs needs to be open. I'm always closing the top a little bit and now we are going to place it underneath of the nail. And the easiest way for me is to go with this hand behind it to secure the form, place it right in the middle and then once I'm happy with it I can start closing the form. So this is the first place I would squish here and then close the form. Okay, really pinch it look so we don't have to even use the pinching clamp. The form is fit in well and it's nice and straight. Even squeeze it more. There we are and we are going to build the coffin shaped nails. So normally you would do all your prep, then apply the nail dehydrator, an extra one, universal air bond, and then we can move on into sculpting a beautiful shape. You have to wait for a primer and a universal air bond to dry really well uh, before you start your application. And then we are going to use the light rose fiber gel. It is a sculpting gel. Um, it's just enhanced with an extra fibers for a, um, for a stronger nails. Even if they thinner, they will be still really nice and strong. Okay, nice and thin layer, very close to the cuticle, kind of even press it harder, pick up another scoop. Follow the lines for a coffin shape. And then other side, I'm just going to twist it so you can see it. And then give it a cure. After this layer cures, we have to build up our structure and our apex. And actually I might talk through it a little bit about the apex placement as well, because it is pretty confusing uh, for everyone. So I'm actually show you on my nails as well. So you can see it, my thumbnail, the side view, always we're checking the side view. And I show you where my apex is. So my apex is starting here, not too close to the cuticle. Uh, I always suggest to go kind of gradually so it doesn't look like a huge bump, especially when the nails grow, like after a couple of weeks uh, it will look really bad, it might be even catchy. So the, all the cuticle area has to be really nicely blended in and to be very like almost invisible uh, product there and then comes out, comes out, apex and the apex run through your entire nail. You can see it how straight this nail is. So it doesn't have like a um, growing down bump because uh, uh, when we start like uh, doing the nails there was quite a lot of uh, suggestion about the apex like called even a C curve and people was doing a nails with the curvature like coming down the way. Uh, we don't want that. We want the nail to be really nice and straight and then the apex. So obviously the longer the nail the bigger the apex. So imagine 
this new is half of the length, just like this. My apex would be like coming from here very gradually, go a little bit and then finish there. Okay, so it wouldn't be a huge apex. For a long kneel like we've got in here, my apex is going to start in there. Here will be its peak and it will run up to here and then goes uh, smoother. And that's what I'm going to do it. Okay, to achieve a really nice apex and a really nice um, structure of the kneel, it's better if you do it kind of in a one ball so the gel works for you. So first of all, I will start with the product application. I will fill up any gaps. Nice and thin layer, nice and thin layer. And then once I've got that, I need to pick up a really large scoop of the product. So I've got a really large scoop of the product and I need to place it on the one side of my brush. So I kind of wait, you can see it how the product is moving because I wanted it to be more on the one side of the brush. Sorry, talking too long. And then once I place it, I place it leaving a little bit gap from the cuticle. Okay, sorry, I'm playing with it just so I want to explain it. I leave it a small gap from the cuticle and then I will be working one side, other side, one side, other side up to probably this point. Um, and then press it harder so I don't have as much uh, product. And that's how I'm building up my structure and my apex. If you want to look at the apex, you should really working um, uh, from the side view and checking your apex placement. Okay, so I'm going to twist the knee a little bit on the side view so you can see it as well. So my ball has a contact and you can see it. I'm not pushing it even closer to the cuticle. Okay, I've got this ball. Keep it in the middle because by the time you finish dragging your product, it will run to the side. Okay, going. So this is my apex. I have created a really perfect shape of the apex. Look how nice it is. It comes out gradually and by the time I cure it, um, it will just move into the place, perfect places. You can help it a little bit just by dragging it and and that's it really. And then we have to cure it. So you don't have to do it much. Look at the side. I show you once I take it out before it starts moving too much. Um, you don't want huge apex, like you don't want a Kilimanjaro on your nails uh, because too, too, too much product, too fit product, especially at the free edge is going to cause the lifting. And I'm going to show you the quick demonstration of it as well. Um, quite like to use something always. And then maybe a nail form. So let me cook this nail here. Stay there. You're cooking there. Okay, so my nail is cooking. And then I've got some time for explanation. This is our nail bed. This is our nail. Oh, actually, this is even better. Thank you, cameraman. <laughs> I've got this one. This white part is our extension. This is our kneel bed. And then the gel polish is going to be our apex or top coat. Okay. So if you place your apex uh, very close to the cuticle, it will look very bumpy, like straight wall. You don't want that. You want to put it at a little bit away from the cuticle, but coming up gradually. Uh, that's the correct place. If you put it right in the middle, the nail will look kind of rounded a little bit and we don't want this shape either. And then if you put it too much at the free edge, the nail is going to lift straight away. Look what is happening, like it's lifting. And then after a week, it is uh, going to lift even more. So you cannot have too much product in there. Uh, if you've got the apex in the right place, when the nail grow one week, two weeks, three weeks, the apex is also holding the nail in the correct place uh, as well and preventing the lifting. So that's why this is my correct structure. I've got all the huge amount of, like not huge, but most of the product in this place and very little at the free edge. You can see it also the uh, C curve in here as well, like the hairline, it is not thick. It is really uh, kind of uh, nice thickness, um, a little bit more than the credit card. Uh, and then once I would open it up, the thickness is, mm, the, the the nail becomes thicker and thicker so up to this point it would be like three four times thicker than what you see it at the free edge what else it does is when i would bank with my nail because i've got so much product in here my natural nail bed is protected my nail is not going to break at this part 
the only places where my nail might break is at the weaker part, which is the free edge. So if I bank really strong, the correct structure will don't cause any damage because the nail would break off in here, not like in the middle or or even worse, like in different places. So it is really, uh, really important, like where you place your apex. And uh, also, like clients don't like when the apex is overly too huge as well like you want to find a happy medium so it has to be nice and strong holding your extensions preventing the lifting but also at the t same time it should look really uh, really nice so it comes out naturally then the apex starts here run up to there so this this part of the nail is the thickest part of the nail i hope this helps you guys like uh, with the apex application because it is really uh, confusing quite often uh, where to place especially for a beginner nail technician uh, but i really like you don't want to do a huge kilimanjaro nail and you don't want to place your apex uh, too low i also find that quite often when i'm working on the uh, on someone else work that's when the client comes back for a rebalance so say this nail will grow i will have all this bulk of the nail here they do not they do not remove the bulk like they shorten the free edge and they don't remove any bulk from the free edge and the extensions becomes really heavy and then they thinly apply the product in here that is so wrong again because this will cause the lifting uh, of the nails too so apex is really really important uh, part of the nail structure okay now i'm just going to straight up my side walls so quite a lot of filing tapering we want to have a really nice coffin shape nail shorten the free edge nice and straight and now just smooth it out I better protect my nice nails <laughs> also there is tutorial of them as well on the channel if you didn't see it i don't want any scratches on them also i should show you the difference in between my two thumbs as well i think it will be a nice difference to show you as well in between the pinched like really well pinched nail and not pinched nail because pinching gives a really good strength to the nail as well. Like the more curvature the nail has, the stronger it is. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this nail. So I don't file too much at my apex. Like I'm always uh, leaving this place. Uh, first of all, you are saving lots of product. Secondly, you are saving your hand because you are not going to have as much filing uh, and then the nails looks better as well. So blend everything around the cuticle area. You don't want to see the place where the nail is starting. Okay, blend everything well and smooth out this nail quickly. Once it's nice, we can apply the color and move on into the design. Okay, so that's a coffin shaped nail. And I quickly show you the thumbs before we move into the design. Sorry, I'm taking so long, but I really want to talk through so many different things. You can also see it, how nice this nail is and how not nice this nail is. And that's the difference in between the pinched nail. Okay, so the C carve on this nail and then on this nail. This nail is flat. And that is not pinched it doesn't have this curvature can you see it okay same size nails because my hands are kind of really si um, similar because sometimes you get the clients which will have one size difference in between their hands but my thumbs are the same size and this is only uh, from the pinching like flat nail and nice curved nail and the structure it looks completely different this one is fat and ugly and this one is so nice and beautiful the reason why this one is so fat and ugly i had this 
<laughs> like the sculpted classic French and I had to file it right down to the middle uh, to the down to you can still see there's a little bit of French left uh, that's why I don't like this technique because uh, when we sculpt with the white gel or when we do it uh, with the acrylic um, the pink and white you have to file it right down to the middle and I should pinch it an old product uh, but I didn't and uh, that's why this needle is so ugly <laughs> okay let's move on into the cut eye because that's what we are going to do it so I'm going to grab the upvoted 183 black ink because cut eye looks amazing on top of the black So apply it on the nail, nice and close to the cuticle. Cut eyes are really popular and really awesome designs. And I will show you something interesting, something a little bit different. Once we have applied the color, we can cook it in. So I'm just going to give it a cure and now I'm going to grab my cut eye. Got it here. So we are going to use the cut eye and the magnet which I've got in here. Okay, that's enough. So now I'm going to apply the magnetic gel polish and I'm using a Persian one, number 003. I also really like the 04. I think it's nice. So apply it through the entire extension. All over. Without of touching the cuticles. <laughs> And then using the magnet, we will just go on top of it and make a, like a line. Okay. So just a line, very simple. And then give it a cure. And I love it because this one has a purple. I'm not sure if the camera can show it. It has purple. Uh, no, it doesn't. You see purple. Can you? Okay. We met and this is blue. Yeah, so there is a tiny bit of purple. And yeah. then it's, it's kind of blue, but let me just touch it up because it starts moving. Okay, the line is nice and sharp. Let's cook it quickly. And then I show you the next part of the design. I'm actually really excited. Okay, my palette ring and a little bit of this cut eye. And now we are going to paint a beautiful design. So you on, only want to do the line, okay? And now on the sides of the lines, we are going to paint some swirly parts. Don't make them too thin, like you want them to be pretty uh, decent, just so the cut eye design is going to show on them. Okay, pretty nice and thick. Now don't do too many, we have to only do it couple and then start moving the cut eye. So I'm just touching from all the different angles and moving the design to the places I want it.
Okay, that's enough. I'm happy now. Give it a flash cure. So a couple seconds cure to freeze this part of the design. And then we can move on into another part. So just taking the brush and you can see it, how nice this starts to look. Really fun to do it. Again, pretty thick swirl. Pretty thick one. And of course, depending like which angle we place the needle, um, this is going to be either visible or either not visible. And I love it because this one has all those... It looks sometimes purples and sometimes it looks blue. Absolutely amazing. Then take a magnet again. And just move the design into the correct place you want. And what is good about it, the places uh, which you have already cured, they are not going to move. That's why you would do it this design in a, in a few different parts. Obviously, working on a client, you will be just swapping hand, one hand, other hand, one hand, other hand. <laughs> okay, that's it, flashed cure. And now we are going to paint the other side. So, a swirly part. Like really, you want to put it a pretty decent amount of the product there, just so the cat eye effect is going to show. And then use the magnet. And then once you're happy again, give it a flash cue. And then the last part. And you can create it anything like with this technique. You could do the lines, you could do a roses, you could do like a different type of flowers. Um, like really anything. If you're liking those uh, type of tutorials on the cat eye, let me know down in the comments below because then I might came up with different ideas for you guys as well. And of course you could also use the different colors uh, of it as well. It will look really interesting too. Okay, that's plenty. So I'm just going to use the magnet again. Move it to the right place. There we are. And then give it a proper cure. Very interesting look. You could also decorate it with the gems, with the caviar beads and other different things, but we are going to keep it plain this time. Uh, just so it is a different... But I show you like, it depends what ang the painting is more purple, more blue. More purple, more blue. So depending on the angle we look at, it looks slightly different. I really love it. And again, I show you here as well before I put the top coat. Gosh, it's so much light reflecting. So. Yeah, I need to I need to show um, show you the bit. Oh, I've got some purple in here and then this design is blue. So the line becomes purple. The design is blue. I, the light is so strong. That's uh, I think I will I will go quickly apply the top coat and I will try to find a better angle to show you this finished look. That's the thing with the cat eyes, like they only look nice at the certain angles. <laughs> uh, 
So I'm just applying the top coat, give it a cure, and then I show you the final look. A couple seconds longer, and then I show you the snow. So I'll just clean the dust, and then you can check it at the different angles. It looks so much nicer in real uh, life than it does in the camera. It's so hard to catch all this, all this lighting. Maybe I should go like this. Or like this. Yeah, there we are. So, yeah, absolutely beautiful. I hope you have guys really enjoy watching this tutorial. Glittery hacks and bye for now.